In this demo, I'm going to demonstrate how to apply suspension dynamics upon the chassis of this vehicle uh, based on the relative spatial relationships. Now, in this scene, we've got an uneven terrain. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the top level of this uh, vehicle and add a demo-specific uh, component called Wheel Ground Hugger. Um, in this, we're going to specify a wheel radius of seven, and then we need to add the front wheels and the rear wheels. And this component is simply going to always align the vehicle to the uneven terrain, just align, uh, recast the wheels and figure out an orientation uh, for the vehicle essentially. So this bug rover has a chassis and four wheels. So I'm going to add the front wheels first to the front wheel fields over here. And then likewise for the rear wheels. And the collision layer is going to be everything for now. But if your terrain has a specific um, layer, then yeah, you could select that instead. And I'm going to set the acceleration and max speed to 10 and 10 and 30, because this demo specific component also moves the vehicle. So with that set up, I'm going to select the chassis. And what we're going to do is upon the chassis of this vehicle, I'm going to add a dynamic joint. Okay. Now under sources, I'm not going to add anything because I'm going to let it automatically take the game object that it's applied on as a component. We don't want to use position dynamics under rotation dynamics. So we want to achieve suspension dynamics upon the chassis, which means rotationally, we wanted to rotate with that spring motion. Let's set the damping to 0 0.5. We'll keep it there. And I'm going to set the spring strength to three. I'm going to enable the usage of limits. Um, our simulation mode in this case, I'm going to set to spatial relations, not gravity, because we want it. We want to preserve the orientation of the chassis relative to the uh, the wheel orientation. Now, in simplest terms, we could just set it to be relative to the parent. However, for slightly more advanced uh, results based on the wheels, we could set this to custom points or custom points triangulated, which means a triangulation is generated between the custom points and then the spatial relations are generated relative to that triangulation. Um, now, the relative points in this case are going to be the wheels. So I'm going to set a size of four and I'm going to drag in each of the wheels. And what's going to happen is uh, we are going to determine every the initial spatial relationships between the chassis and those wheels. And as we update the, the orientation of the car, then the chassis is going to try to rotate itself to preserve its relative orientation to those wheels, but while also going through rigid dynamics. So I'm going to press pre-process. That's automatically going to add my chassis game object to the, uh, ch to the sources. We're not using position dynamics. I think we're ready to go. And to begin with, yeah, our top level wheel ground hugger component is going to do the motion. So we don't have any joint limits, which means we're in complete, you know, free motion at the moment. So to see what that means, um, I'm going to grab the bug rover and this component is automatically going to be recasting the wheels to the ground and orienting the, the parent level. And let's see the effect. So without any joint uh, limits, you'll see that whenever we readjust the car relative to the uneven terrain, what happens is the chassis will try to reorient itself through the dynamic uh, filter using mass spring dynamics. And then we'll have that secondary motion and the oscillation effect, which is effectively the suspension that we're trying to simulate. There you go. We can go sideways. You'll have, it'll move along the roll and likewise forward and backwards. We'll move around the pitch. And when we rotate, then we're going to have like a twist kind of motion for the suspension. Now this is all good, except 
we need to bound the dynamics of this vehicle. And to do that, we need to apply joint limits. Obviously, we shouldn't be able to rotate that crazily, and we don't want to control it all via the rotation dynamics. Yes, we could change the spring strength and so on. So if I go here and change the rotation dynamics, I'm going to add really high sp spring strength and like a high damping. Let's see what happens. Then it'll converge a lot quicker, as you could see. Uh, but with that said, we want the same effect but with joint limits. So to achieve that, I'm going to select the chassis of the vehicle. And upon this, we've got to set up a simulation mode and relative to the custom points. Now I'm going to add an additional component, which is in this case going to be a dynamic joint limit swing twist because we've got three degrees of motion. We don't want it to be a hinge, although you could if you just wanted to move along the roll or the pitch direction. I want it to be able to move with the suspension along all three uh, degrees of freedom, all three axes. So when I create this, let's orient it to the forward direction, which it is by default. And to begin with, I'm going to set a limit angle of 20 degrees. And let's set a twist angle of zero degrees. So by setting the twist angle to the limit to zero degrees, it means we don't want the car to be twisting at all along the forward axis in this case, uh, whereas we want it to be able to rotate up and down in a 20 degree range and left and right, you know, for the pitch and then also along the roll 20 degrees. So with that done, let's see what happens and move it manually. So if I take this rover, I'm going to start moving it left and right. Uh, you'll see it only moves along the pitch uh, as a suspension and only within 20 degrees. And furthermore, it's also twisting along 20 degrees. I think I'm, I mixed up the, uh, the roll and the twist. So in this case, our twist is actually the roll. So if I go back to the chassis, I don't want it to be able to twist. So I'm gonna set, in this case, we have the limit angle. Uh, we could change the ratio. So if I change the height ratio and then increase the twist to 20, then it means we have a roll of 20. But a twist of zero. There you go. So now we can, we've got a bit of pitch and a bit of roll, but within 20 degrees, but we don't have any twist, which is ideally what we want. Now with that done, I'm going to copy what I've done and then paste it here. Maybe, yeah, we could change that to 15 degrees. So you see we've got, we can rotate this way to 20, uh, 15 degrees up and down, and then also along the swing axis, but with the height ratio set to zero, meaning only along the pitch, 15 degrees up and down. Okay, so let's take a look. Oops. Um, all right, so I'm going to move it manually. And then let's enable the motion and see what happens. So as you can see, we're driving this vehicle and it's driving along a noisy terrain. And based on the rotation dynamics, we're getting different, yeah, we're getting a suspension type effect upon the chassis. We can increase the settings here. We could say, set the spring strength to 10 to avoid that violent rotation or spring effect when it's very noisy. So it's a lot you know, more controlled and converges more quickly. Or we could keep it as it was. And there you have it. That's a very quick and simple way in which to, yeah, in which to generate suspension without going through a physics engine very quickly and simply.
the last thing I'm going to do is add a bit of um, twist by changing the ratio here. So maybe instead of that, we want a ratio of height ratio of 0 0.4 to 1 so that we have we allow just a tiny bit of twist as well. So let's see how that looks if I start rotating. Yeah, so when I rotate, we do get a twist left and right as well, but like in a very limited range. So yeah, that's the level of control that you get along three d degrees of uh, freedom as far as rotation. And we can pretty much limit each one while still running those dynamics. And I'm going to increase the damping and the spring strength and take a look once again. There you go. With stronger spring strength, it's, it's a bit more realistic and less exaggerated or cartoony. And you could change those settings towards the right effect. All right. Thank you for watching.